So this is for both of you. All of these questions you can sort of toss the ball around. So these are very physical roles. Was that something that attracted each of you to the project for your respective characters? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, it definitely did. I've wanted to play a, a, an, an ape or an animal, or but especially an ape since I was a little kid. And uh, getting to do performance capture was, was just a dream. So, yeah. And for you? Yeah, I think it. I think it just happened to be that the the case. Uh, there was a lot of physical stuff. Um, um, I, I always love the stunt element of a job, and so you know that was that's always going to be exciting. But I don't think it was an intentional thing. But yeah, I loved it. Uh, what can each of you tell us about the look and the the visual look and the scope of the film, and what can audiences expect when they see it on the big screen? Well, I mean, this is this is an expansion of the the world of Planet of the Apes. The 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 universe that that Wes has kind of created here is is it's it's just bigger than than the last three mm -hmm. films, mm -hmm. but also kind of harkens back to the '68 universe. Mm -hmm. I think there's something very kind of luscious about this one visually, and and almost other otherworldly. You know, it it, it is. It's our, it is our world, but it, but it looks so different. Yeah. And, and there's kind of a, a, a twinkle to that and a, and a magic to that. And also I feel like it really does feel like it, it's an, adve an, an adventure and a journey because you get to see so many different locations and so it's very visually stimulating and, and kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. And then sort of seamlessly from what you were talking about, uh, could you speak a little bit about what is it about Wes that made him the ideal director for this film? God, Wes is, he's, he's, he's like truly a visionary, you know, people throw around that word, but like he, he sees everything and, and the clarity with which he directed this movie, with which he, he, he even had the idea for this movie is really astounding. Um, and his passion was just like, so infectious. Mm -hmm. Every day, you could feel how much he loved this this story and these characters, um, and he was really in it with us. Like he was, he was really. He he was our he was our leader. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me to be able to go to to work every day and to be able to fully trust him, mm -hmm. and 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 to be able to just say yes. And take take the direction with with that trust and knowing that he wants the best for it and that and that he's intelligent and has a vision and um, that was so freeing and uh, yeah and 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 to to get a director that's got such a vision and is so visual but is also so incredibly sensitive to the actors and is able to provide direction and thoughts that you haven't even thought of. Emotionally intelligent. Yeah. He's, he's so right there in, with in, in the terms of character. giving giving that the, the direction, but also mm. in terms of working with the actors in order to yeah. get the best out of them. And you have to have a certain kind of intelligence to be able to do that and to trigger things and to... Um, and, and to, to know what your actors need. Yeah, exactly. Not many directors can do that. But also, you know, Especially, it's it's amazing considering he's not an actor. He yeah. comes from visual effects, and he has an an understanding of the technology that that's making this film possible that most directors do not have. Um, he he really can kind of do it all. Oh. <laughs> it's it's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are very physical roles. Was that something that attracted you to the project for both of you? Absolutely. Oh yeah. When you have an opportunity to work on with your with your my body my instrument my voice my my my, my body and my voice uh and demanding equal um, attention um it's 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 the feast of of what being an actor for me is is about i dreamt that it would be what it became, but it was way greater where uh, my dream was always to uh, be able to fully immerse myself and create 
very, very different humans. And in this case, I got to create this bonobo and uh, the idea of trying to figure out how to filter my humanity um, through this, this, this different anatomy, this different physiology, this different psychology uh, was such uh, a great challenge. And, um, and you gotta admit, it felt really, really good to get into our characters. And when we were all interacting as apes, it felt incredibly um, natural and, um, and really quite wonderful to the point where, you know, they gave us an ape school before we started shooting, we really could have used a human school so that we can integrate back into society. <laughs> yeah. Can you each tell us about ape school? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I can tell you about ape school. All right. Um, so, uh, we started by, we walk into the, uh, uh, the basement of a soundstage on the Disney lot in, uh, Sydney, Australia, um, and there on the walls, there are pictures of the skeletal structures of various apes. So immediately I'm noticing the differences between my, and, 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 and a human skeleton as well. So we're starting to already just visually pick apart the differences and pick, pick at the differences. So then we, uh, I mean, I remember the first day we, we you take your shoes off and like, he, here's this group of people that I'm eventually going to fall in love with. Um, and with Elaine Gautier, our movement coach, um, and he's a incredible performer and as well as he's a biologist, I believe, a scientist. And so we start unpacking the anatomy of, of apes, um, unpacking the fact that the rib cage and the hip bones are a lot closer together on apes than humans so there we don't human beings have this axis in which they turn on apes do not you know so you're learning how to shift your weight it's just like this is the the fundamental basics of of and sort of and then you're learning how to walk and you're giving this information you're given this information by elaine and just asking you to walk around the room and just layering in and layering in more and more information and and taking on like like your center of gravity changing and being lower. Your legs are shorter. Your legs are, your, you have thumbs almost on, on your feet. Um, mm -hmm. So you, over the process of six weeks, by the time, you know, we're ready to shoot, we've, we've gone through um, examining not only the physicality of, of the ape that you're playing, but like the psycho, like the psychology, the physio anatomy, like the understanding the difference between a human, the human uh, vocal muscular structure and vocal cords and larynx and things like that different than than an apes. Um, we've we've delved into breaking the language up um, uh, of the script in terms of making it um, more um, individual, individual. And from and, that point, can I continue? Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, from that point on, after we go through the ape school, um, and, and find the, the movement of the ape and it becomes part of our body, uh, we start to filter in our own unique characters, our own unique idiosyncratic behavior, um, our intentions, um, uh, the obstacles that we have, how, how we could achieve our, our goals, uh, our individual goals. And um, it's interesting because Alain Gauthier, uh, our movement uh, director, would place us in situations where now that we have all of this information, he would place us in situations where we were able to improvise with each other. So for me, it started off with Owen and I had been doing a lot of thinking about uh, humanity and the history of Homo sapiens. And uh, I wanted to teach this young ape fiercely about why we can't let humans gain power again. And, um, and I saw the shift in his eyes where he, he understood that um, 
that where I was coming from was a place that he wanted to know more about. And, uh, and, then, and then I was placed in situations where I was with, um, with Travis and Lydia, uh, and, and there was this fierce uh, kind of sense of hierarchy um, that arose out of those situations. So, so we all got to know each other as apes first and uh, Ape School really did continue throughout the entire shoot, really, and um, and continues uh, to this day, where we still all greet each other as apes, um, rather than saying, "Hi, how are you?" We go, oh, 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 oh. "It's nice to see you, although I disagree I with your philosophies." Well. Yes. But, there is room for improvement. There's room for growth, my friend. Yes, okay. Just calm yourself. Breathe in through yes. your nose and out through yes. your mouth. Take your time. Yes. Take in the world as you see it. He does not mean to sound so condescending. Oh, condescending. That's not a <laughs> word that's in my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's here. Um, and it's to the point like, where we can just, you know, jump in and... You know, live and breathe as apes. Yeah, and communicate with us, with each other through being an ape, and that's a pretty neat thing, and it, it doesn't go away. I don't think ever. I don't know no. if I'm ever gonna stop once I've learned. Like this is in my body; it's in my cells. You know, like okay. that. Okay. Apes till we die. Apes till we die. Yeah. What can you tell us about the look and scope of the film? Oh my God. Mm. Uh, uh, I could start off just with the the. Um, uh, you know, first we started off auditioning and then we both individually had these meetings with Wes and Wes really knew exactly, exactly what movie he was making mm -hmm. and took us through this journey with all of these images, um, even down to the detail of, uh, th there were sketches of Proximus already mm -hmm. that I could look at and yeah. go, oh my God. Spooky. There he is. Yeah. And, and, um, um, so the, the amount of detail and time that was put in before we even mm. had an opportunity to, to even come into consciousness about the project was <laughs> so overwhelming. It was flabbergasting to think, uh, how much time was already put in and then once we did our jobs, which took uh, approximately six months, um, there was still another year of work, uh, world building and, 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 and painting every intricate detail about every single finite movement of our faces and the intention. Uh, everything came through so clearly, and uh, um, uh, I, I, I could keep going. So you, you, you go ahead. Uh, um, well, you know what's great about this this particular film, uh, this you know this installment of the franchise, this new chapter, um, is the presence of nature, and what hmm. three hundred years from now or about would look like if human beings are no longer the apex predator, like no longer on the top of the food chain. And it's such a lush, green, mm. uh, beautiful and decayed. So it's like a, it's like decay and, and new growth happening over that decay. So the, um, the, the decay of the human imprint, right? The world, the skyscraper, the, the building, it's really, truly mother nature reclaiming itself yeah and it's all and it's a character in this, in this oh, film God. this film um yeah. there's a lot of daylight uh yeah. sequences there's a lot of lush you know like and that's you know from being able to shoot in australia and some of the most beautiful places in the world um but there's a lot of there's a lot of daylight sequences in this film this like the last you know war was pretty dark um the the lack of the human element in this film um, and so I think that allows us to, to really, really, um, dig, take a, a closer look at the, the, the complicated relationships between apes. It's, I feel like this is really in the apes movie. You know what um, I, I also really enjoyed was, um, to see the earth so incredibly healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. 
that 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 human imprint had been re was being removed uh uh rebirthed so um it, it it almost has a feeling of of like you know what we would imagine eden would have been like um well you know when we're yeah. shoot out there in those locations yeah. you know in the bush in the in like the rainforest of of, of untouched rainforest in australia the air was so fresh mm -hmm. and clean and crisp and at times very hot mm -hmm. uh, but it did it, it and the water like of, of that river was so clean and it felt a lot like oh wow this is what it must feel like to be there are places uh, very few places but like that are untouched and unsullied mm. by human beings footprint and it it really gave that feeling of of you know living in that world um where the earth where the where nature and the earth is really 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 present um you know and it that was, that felt it was really trippy special to me was watching the movie it felt a lot like the place where i grew up i'm, I'm from a place that's you know, 21 hours north of Toronto, and it's it's endless forests and lakes and rivers and creeks and mountains. And uh, yeah, they, you know, they say that the human brain uh, functions so much better when it's in nature. And when you watch this movie, you almost feel at ease until, you know, the narrative starts to take hold. And then, you know, there's so much tension and so many uh, rival um kind of philosophies going on and uh, a lot of very high stakes but it's all done in in this amidst this beautiful uh these beautiful vistas that you could literally pause every frame of the film and take a picture and want to put that picture on your wall <laughs> yeah it's, so it's gorgeous yeah, it's gorgeous yeah yeah lastly what can audiences expect to see on the big screen I think audiences can expect to see um, a film that is so incredibly well thought out and executed on every front. Um, you know, it's it's a real smorgasbord, um, right? Yeah, I like I like what's come up is like how they what the world building. Yeah, you know what I mean, like what this what where what where you're placed and where you're brought into almost you know off uh, like the first two minutes like after the, the the opening sequence then we're into this new world you know mm. and again with wes's um brilliant vision you know he truly is a visionary director like i mean the mm. the story that we talked about for an hour and a half via zoom uh, with the storyboards and him telling me the the explaining to me the the various arcs and of the characters and the, the arc of the film um, was pretty much the film that we shot and um, I think when you do go and see this movie on a large as large a screen as you possibly can um, what you can expect to see or what you would expect to happen is to be submerged into this world that is strange and it's foreign and it's slightly familiar um and i think it puts apes in their natural habitat in as much as they would be uh without human beings interfering or or mm. or dictating uh how the world is supposed to be so you really the way that you know the climbing sequences you know the 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 way that they move through the world like the innocence um it really is a three-dimensionalized experience um and i think it may change the way that we view you know the next time you go to a sanctuary or you go to a zoo i think it it certainly put something on my mind in terms of how i viewed uh apes no. in in captivity no doubt um, and there, it, it really truly acts as a mirror uh, mm. to humanity mm. and and uh just one last thing i wanted to add um for you audience members or potential audience members this film can be digested in many different ways um so if you are feeling like you just want pure escapism and just uh 
you know, disappear into these beautiful vistas following this gorgeous uh, uh, story of, of uh, really it's the journey of a, of a, of a hero mm -hmm. and uh, it's the hero's journey. Um, you can just go and do that. And if you choose to look between the lines and um, engage in all of the potential um, um, different uh, themes, the different things that are happening in this world right now, um, you can do that and you could go as deep as you like and because uh, it's such a rich uh, world uh, to be a part of. So I just encourage you to sit down and just enjoy, enjoy it in all its splendor. Yes, sir. Let's roll, please. And speeding. And this is the Disney generic with Wes Fall. Okay. What is it about the Planet of the Apes franchise that continues to resonate with audiences? It's a good question, but I think it has to do with um, thoughtful entertainment, a, a blend of spectacle and truth. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's usually a story that kind of reminds us of what it means to be human. Um, we look at, we see ourselves in these apes. You know, they resonates with the times that we're in, um, but it also combines it with the cutting edge visual effects, the, the peak of what's possible today, technologically, and the experience of going to a giant movie theater with great sound and great picture. And so hopefully we've, we've done that here. Uh, when casting actors to play the ape characters, what were you looking for? Okay, for me, uh, casting a movie is a very much internal kind of uh, gut level thing. It's, it's kind of purely instinct. But I look for good people, <laughs> good actors, and then everything else works out, you know. So all of our cast had never done this process, the technical process before, but they're all incredibly well versed in the franchise, but also they're just great people to work with. And you need that when you're making a movie, which is really difficult work. And so I think we've done it, and I think people are going to fall in love with these new cast of characters, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll get to continue the adventure with them in future movies. How does Caesar's legacy tie into this film, and why was it so important to have Andy Serkis involved? So Andy Serkis, I think, is our, our ape godfather. You know, he showed the world what's possible with this technology and just his, just his performance, which is, which is massive. Um, he's a great actor and a great person. And it was very important to us moving forward that we were going to get this right, that we felt like we belonged in, in, the, uh, in the tradition of these great movies. And so Andy was a really great role for us to you know, check with him on the script and on, on, the, on the direction that we were going. Um, and he's, he, was, he was a great sounding board for the actors to learn this process of how you... You come into this thing and are a great actor, are a great, give great performances that we're going to translate to these impossible images of apes that you believe in, you know. Um, oh, and then the first part of the question, how does Caesar's legacy tie into this film? You're right, got you. So it was very important to us that we stood on our own two feet in terms of the story, in terms of the adventure of this movie, but um, we did not want to lose all the amazing goodwill and story essence of what was created before us with Andy and his storyline of Caesar. And so we found a good way to create some distance from those movies so we could start a new chapter, to have a new beginning here. But Caesar is a story in this movie. He is a, he's a character in this movie. Um, the ideals of what he stood for, what he meant to apes, his myth and legend, echoes throughout the, the world in, in our story. And this Noah character, as he navigates this new world for himself, he comes to learn who this character was, and it shapes him as, 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 as a character by the end of the movie. And ultimately, um, I think, changes him into the ape that he's going to become. Well, my background and how I got involved with the film um, started, obviously, as an acrobat. Um, I was a trampolinist for many years, competing for Canada. And uh, after graduating, from university, I decided to run away with the circus. I was drafted by Cirque du Soleil back in 1986, and I toured with the company for about nine years, um, after which I moved more into teaching and also into performing in dance theater. Um, 
dance theater, and then also just physical theater and different roles for theater, for opera. And uh, ultimately in the 2000s, I became a choreographer. I was specialized in creating movement when it comes to opera and, and physical theater, and obviously choreography uh, when I was working with live shows. And in 2003, I was asked to come in and join a famous show called Cavalia uh, that I choreographed. I, I was specialized in choreographing all the acrobatics in this show and responsible for integrating the world of acrobatics with the equestrian world. I then followed the show for a total of about 16 years as artistic director and uh, also as a um, resident director. Um, and uh, during that time, I, I had in and outs going into opera productions and, and, and physical theater and uh, I had a chance to do some work with uh, NBC uh, uh, choreographing for um, Celebrity Circus, of all things. And, uh, and then, uh, yes, what invo was involved, uh, I think I started with motion capture back in the really early days. It must have been, uh, God, it was 2000 and uh, close to 2000, actually. Uh, I, I worked in a, a film by Peter Cronenberg, and it was really the beginning. There was like six caption, you know, dots on uh, the suits. And uh, obviously it, it took me to, uh, you know, a lot of uh, great shows, a lot of working with performers, a lot of teaching. And uh, one day I got a call um, asking me if I would be interested in preparing the actors for Planet of the Apes. And uh, I didn't even hesitate for a moment. And here I am today. Yes, uh, for me, preparing an actor for a physical role starts with conditioning the body and, and stripping some of the conditioned layers, uh, habits of, of, of the human uh, in that actor so that he becomes a, I call it, a, you know, an open vessel. An open vessel is ready to receive new content. And, and this is a process that goes through a lot of different techniques, um, specific movements that I choose among many of those techniques to get an actor to develop his coherence, develop his coordination, uh, ultimately have the perfect body awareness to be ready to now incorporate a new persona and not only a psyche, but a physical persona, which is the case for Planet of the Apes. Um, and then the process, of course, once this is achieved, is really starting with the basics, studying the creature that you're creating, in our case, the ape, and uh, understanding the physiology of it, understanding, you know, the different proportions and the nature of that creature and its behavior in nature and in social environments um, and and then taking the actor on that journey you know first discovering the physical creature that he's going to be then slowly uh, uh, taking him through who he is what, what, what does he like uh, how does how does he act when he's angry when he's scared when he's happy uh, when he's loving and, and going through all the array of different emotions, different intensities, and eventually once that has been workshopped and uh, obviously improvised, hours and hours of improvisation, then we get into the scenes and we start doing scene-specific work and uh, playing at different rhythms, uh, different positions, different, you know, uh, going through all that. And, and the process took about six weeks in all uh, before shooting time. And um, we had some contributions. Uh, Andy Circus was really generous uh, of his person. Uh, did some Zoom calls with uh, the actors one-on-one -on -one to help them just tweak their character, find the story behind it, find the voice, find how they they, they would they would you know have their uh, narrative come out properly. <clears throat> and then we were ready to shoot, and and here we go. Uh, we're starting a movie. Perfect, thank you. And finally, can you tell us about, uh, in relation to the motion capture work and 
what you have done with the actors with the Ape School. What's it like to look at the final film or to look at the pieces that you've seen and the look of how amazing it is with the artists that have brought it to life as well as the actors and how all of those things have married together to make this final film? Yes, yeah, so when, it, when it comes to uh, the, how, you know, the, the, the process of doing motion capture and, and, and that, that transformation literally to the end product, which is absolutely stunning. Um, <clears throat> what was really important during the shoot was for me to make sure that the actors uh, not only mastered their character and were playing it the right way, depending on what the director was looking for, uh, also helping keep uh, you know an eye on how they play their characters through the whole shoot because the actor being focused on what the scene is and how the, the character is going to play that scene sometimes takes him out of the format of the ape especially if there's last minute changes and variations to be explored and and um, so I always had an eye on what they were doing in front of the camera and uh, it, it was interesting because over time since sometimes it was difficult to get to them because there was a lot of people on set and a, a lot of people that have to to interact with them and makeup and costume and and the director in and out I, I found a way to communicate with them uh, by, by, by just uh, m mimicking, signing, looking at each other. And when it was complicated, I'd find my way in and talk to them and say, look, you could do this, do that. But uh, it was pretty phenomenal how over time the actors, after finishing a scene and having you know, their, their feedback and everything before they started anything else, anything else would, would just look at me and we looked at each other and we understood what was going on. And, and I would just do a little mimic to show them, you know, remember to stay low or, uh, you know, watch your head, you know, your, your head is not right or watch your knees, you're standing up straight and now you look like a guy in a suit. And, you know, all these things, they're, they're really important details to make sure that the actor in the mocap uh, suit is, is really that character that we worked on through the whole, you know, process of shooting the movie and remains consistent so that it, it doesn't become too much of a challenge for all the VFX, Weta going through all il illustration and CGI, you know, uh, having to question themselves, oh, that, that was weird, we're going to have to redo the legs or whatever. So th this is all something that I had to keep an eye for and try to help as much as I can. And my, my relationship with Weta was great. I mean, Eric... Uh, the VFX producer was fantastic. He, he really helped me. Sometimes my eye was somewhere else or on another character in the background, whatever, and Eric would come and, and elbow me and say, I think, you know, this, this, this character, he's, he's just, yeah, he's not right. There's something wrong. And then I, I get in, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. And it, it was really uh, um, a lot of uh, cooperation happening that way. And um, I mean, what I saw so far coming out on the end product is just mesmerizing. My fear was that there was so much work done in uh, creating these characters and the, these actors, you know, having to transform themselves and going through the whole meat grinder of creating a character, which is difficult. It's emotional. It, it has a lot of layers. And, uh, and hoping that in the end, I could recognize these characters just looking at the uh, CGI animation and just go, wow, this, yeah, this, this is exactly, I can, I can feel their heartbeat, you know? And uh, that, that's what we're seeing. It's just extraordinary. The, the, the work that they did was phenomenal. It's pure magic, really.